what's up everybody welcome back to the channel um, doing another brake rebuild today uh, the only difference with this one from the Evo one that we did previously well these are STI brakes I guess that's a difference um, the only other difference is that I'm gonna be using the tool that I purchased specifically for pulling pistons out of the calipers um, you know I'll get into it I'll put the part number down in the description and a link to it on Amazon as well uh, but that will make your life a little bit easier if you don't have a big air compressor and a way to blow the pistons out like we did in the past. So uh, enjoy. I'm going to be doing these in Illusion Cherry, which is an awesome color, and uh, let's get to the video. Hey guys, just wanted to give you a little pro tip for breaking these bolts loose on these rear calipers. I put an Allen head T-handle in the vise and then I can push down on the caliper uh, just to give it a little more pressure. Uh, they paint these so there's always paint in the actual bolt head which makes them kind of a pain in the ass to get off. Um, this just gives you a little more leverage and makes them really easy to break loose. Uh, then you can just uh, head over to your workbench or wherever and pull them out. Um, same as always, you know, lefty loosey righty tighty, nothing special about that. Let's get to it. All right, now that we've got these uh, broken loose, it's easy just to spin these out, obviously. Um, I know I've shown you guys how to take these apart in the past, but I've shown you how to do it, um, or disassemble, like pull the pistons and seals and stuff out of these in the past. Um, but prior to this, I did it with air. Um, I figured I would show you guys the other way of doing this, since this is how I normally do them anyway. Uh, I just figured if it, a lot of you guys might not have the tool specific to doing this, um, you can buy it on Amazon. It's actually, let's see if I can put it right here. This is the tool if you want to look it up on Amazon. Um, I think it's like 44 bucks shipped, something like that. And it's this tool right here. I'll show you guys how to use it. This last bolt out here. And then don't forget on these rear calipers, you always have this little O ring right here that kind of is hit or miss as to whether or not it comes with uh, each rebuild kit that you get. I don't see it in this particular rebuild kit but I haven't looked at it yet too much, so yeah, it's that little guy there. All right, with these apart, um, next step is gonna be pulling the seals out. Um, you know, because we're using a full rebuild kit, replacing all the seals, um, you don't have to be too careful with pulling these seals out. Um, you know, if you're using these again, which I don't necessarily recommend, then of course, uh, you know, you need to be incredibly careful as far as pulling them out. Um, I just use a flathead typically, and I'll use a pick sometimes to help get them out. This one I'm just going to pop out. And there you go. Basic seal. And that leaves us with the piston, which brings us to this tool right here. Um, basically how this tool works is it's got these little grippy, these knurled pieces right here that grab the inside of the piston. Um, this is essentially a pair of vice grips that works opposite. So you squeeze that like this, and you just rotate it back and forth while trying to slide it out. Um, This is a lot easier if you put it in the vise, but I didn't want to move over and put it in the vise. But that's it right there. You just pop them out. So this one still has a ton of fluid in it. And the fluid being in there is not a real problem. I'm taking it so it doesn't spill all over my work area here. Um, yeah, we'll just keep repeating this process on the rest of these. Oh, and then you need a Torx bit to pull these out. Um, I usually wait till after chemical stripping to pull those out. Just makes life a little easier. It gets all the brake dust and stuff. I'm sure you can see there's a ton of brake dust and stuff built up into this. Um, 
just helps you get all that stuff out which makes the torques actually fit down in there because if not you end up stripping it and you got to cut that head off and it's a complete pain in the ass so we'll uh time lapse the rest of this right now and get to getting oh actually since you're still here let me pull the other thing is this little seal in here it's essentially just like an o-ring also needs to come out um, like I said, I've shown you guys this in the past. The only difference is using this particular tool this time. All right, let's get the rest of these apart. All right, got these front split apart here. Um, you know, once again, got these tiny little O-rings. I have not really like an O-ring. Have this weird little plug area on them, but you're gonna make sure that you don't want to lose those because, like I said, uh, most rebuild kits don't have them. It would appear as though the rebuild kits for these calipers do not have them either. So, and they're not like a wear part. You know, I mean, they're just basically clamp. You know, in a clamped surface. So you don't have to worry too much about it, but just make sure that you grab those, um, you know, 15 millimeter to pull the bolts out. These bolts right here to hold the calipers together. Um, those are 15 mil. So make sure you get those out. Um, these are all coated and finished assembled. That's why like parts of the bolt head aren't coated. Um, I coat them separately as you'll see here shortly. So yeah, we'll keep moving forward.
figured I'd show you guys um, my kind of method for cleaning up all the hardware um, caliper slide or the pad sliders, uh, the screws that hold them all together. I even throw, if we're not replacing the um, bleeder valves, I also throw those in. So, same as I've done with uh, three piece wheel bolts in the past, so just take some chrome cleaner. It uh, doesn't really matter what kind. Um, pour it in a container that's going to be safe to have chrome cleaner in it because this is an acid, of course. And then uh, you basically just drop all your parts into it. So you can see these ones, these all haven't gone through and been cleaned yet, and these ones all have. So it makes a big difference with no effort. I mean, you literally just drop the parts into place and let them soak for about 10 minutes. Um, I usually stir it around with a screwdriver after 10 minutes and let it sit for another couple and then pull all the parts out. Usually with a magnet or I'll just pour the um, fluid back into the container and scoop them out with you know, my hand and just put them on a paper towel to dry them. Um, this is an acid so you know, be careful, you don't want to keep your hands in it. Um, you might be able to see on camera already this is actually bubbling. So that's actually just the clear, um, or the clear, the cleaner actually working. Uh, so yeah, we'll come back to those and I won't show them again. This is, you're just going to see them during the assembly, but you'll see that everything comes clean. The bolts don't ever really come clean. These are like kind of a dingy gray, even when brand new. So they don't ever look great, but it gets all the extra crap out of the, um, the head of them. So you can get your tool back in with no issue. So now we got all these things coated. Um, we're gonna go through and assemble them with the rebuild kit. Uh, the customer supplied this rebuild kit. I'll put the part numbers and kind of some links to other rebuild kits. Um, obviously they're not gonna be specific to your project unless it happens to be the same as this one, but um, most of this stuff is really readily available online, so easy to find. Um, first thing I wanna make sure to mention is you need to grab pieces that match each other. And when I say that, I mean that the openings for the bleeder valves are on the same side when you match them up. Because it'd be a bummer if you go to assemble these. Because they will bolt back together the wrong way. You can put grab one from the other side of the car and put on this piece, and then your uh, bleeder is facing the wrong direction. So you want to make sure they're always facing the same direction. Um, as far as the rebuild goes on these, I know I've actually done this on this channel in the past. And I, I want to say somebody actually recommended a different product for doing this. I have literally always used um, just dot three brake fluid to do it. Um, you know, like I said, I'm sure that there's something better. I, somebody suggested something better product I'd never heard of and admittedly will probably never use. Um, but we're going to just slap these together the way I have always done it because it seems to work out fairly well. Uh, you just take your O-ring here and slide that in. You wanna make sure that you don't twist this O-ring um, when you're getting it back into the caliper. Because if you, well, if you get a twist in it for one, uh, the piston probably won't slide back in. But if it does, you're gonna damage it and it's not gonna seal anyway, so <clears throat> that's obviously an issue. And it just takes some time. You just work this thing in. Um, they always seem like they're too big to fit in there uh, until you start getting them most of the way in. And then once you get them most of the way in, I like to run my thumb around just like that, just to make sure they're all pressed down into place. Uh, you're trying to make your life as easy as possible, or as simple as possible rather, putting these together. So then uh, I usually just take a little bit of brake fluid just to lube these up. I think that's actually one of the things the guy said the brake fluid isn't lube technically. So he could be right. I have no idea. This is always how I've done it and it works like a champ. So uh, take it for what it's worth. Uh, if you go back, there's, I want to say it was, it might even be my first, uh, my first video and I guess technically my first how-to um, that I mentioned this. One big thing you want to make sure you don't get brake fluid on the powder coated surface because that'll be a bummer. Um, then once you get those uh, in, you just slide this thing into place, and you can just press it down with your thumb, like so. So once that's in there, dust seal's next. 
I actually normally before I push this down I'll put the dust seal on and then pop it into place just because it's easier than tucking it down into here. Um, let's grab this tool and pull it out just to show you that way. I guess I could show you the way that I actually do it every time to make the most sense here. Slide this thing out a little bit here. Once again, the part number and stuff, the link for these uh, off of Amazon, I'm gonna put down in the description. <clears throat> then you're just uh, gonna throw this dust seal on these. And you can't really put it on, I mean, yeah, I guess you could put it on wrong if you're ridiculous. I usually put it on, then pull up a little bit on it like this and spin it, that way I know it locks all down in place. Shove the piston back down and in, and just make sure that you seat the uh, dust cap all the way down. So there's that one, and then, uh, you know, we're still going to have to put the plates on and everything, but I'm going to do these pistons first. I'll do uh, one front and one rear caliper, just because I don't want to be too repetitive with you guys here, and there's no point in showing you the same exact process over and over and over. Although I guess I do that with all my powder coating videos, technically speaking. <laughs> Shove it all down with your thumb. Well, with my thumb, I'm not using your thumb technically. Hoping that this is all on camera. Um, that lubed up. Grab this. Oh wait, I had wiped this off and then I just got something back on it. That's the thing, you wanna make sure you clean these. Um, acetone, brake cleaner, whatever, you just wanna make sure that they're clean. The last thing you want is sand or anything even close to that in your brake system or in your customer's brake system if you're a powder coater. Push that down into place. Slip the dust ring on. Spin it around like normal. Shove it down and in. And this outside piece doesn't really like clip in necessarily. Um, it'll go down and seat in place. Like you'll be able to tell if it's stuck. Um, but yeah, those ones are done. I'm gonna grab, these are the plates after they've been cleaned in the uh, chrome cleaner like I mentioned. And you want to make sure, uh, it actually depends on the caliper, if there is a difference from front to rear on these. Um, Evo calipers, there is a difference, and on the Subaru ones there doesn't appear to be, and I don't necessarily understand why or how that could be. But that is in fact the case, so. Grab. I put these in, I mean I take these out with an impact and I put them in with an impact, I just go slow. Um, they have Loctite on them, but they seem like they get kind of wild trying to get them back into place. <clears throat> but yeah, there's that. Um, this is, of course, one of the ones that you're going to have to put. These little O-rings, like I said, this rebuild kit did not come with replacement O-rings for but the seal between the calipers. But, like I said, this is, a, this is not a wear part. I mean, this literally just is a, a little O-ring. Um, that pops into place. Just like that. And then we'll throw the plates onto... Wait, why am I doing this backwards? There we go. That. And then this is, I'll make a list of the tools that you need, but this this is a T27. I might have mentioned that already. Um, but a T27 is what holds these in. And then, once those are together, you're gonna grab some of your bolts that you uh, coated. You know, in my case, I slide them into the calipers, as you saw. 
drop all four of these in here. And if you're, uh, if you're doing a three layer coating for whatever reason, you're definitely gonna wanna mask off these shanks on here um, because this is a pretty tight fit. And if you go to three layers, they're definitely not gonna fit. So that would be a bummer, obviously. Go through and have to sand all that down. Although you can sand it fairly quickly. Now I don't know where my T-handle wrench is. Of course. Ridiculous, it was literally sitting right in front of me, which is normally how it works, it seems. And see, these ones, even with two coats, are fairly tight. Um, they're still, I mean, very workable. They're not going to just fall out, but you're not just going to get them right in either. So just something to be aware of. Try to let you guys know anything that I've come across that's an issue so that you don't have to learn the hard way. Because I know a lot of you guys are maybe watching this video because you want to know how to do this not as a powder coater, just as like a guy in his garage. And one thing most people don't want is more downtime than necessary. So <laughs> try to let you guys know if I find a shortcut or can get you away from making a mistake. I'm actually going to grab impact and throw those in. Alright, got this thing back here. Oh, I just walked over here and I have no idea what I just did with the tool that was in my hand. Alright, impact on here. Drop these together. Okay, and this one's actually an issue because this powder is pretty tight on here, so... <clears throat> I do two coats a lot, I'm not really sure why this one seems like it's tighter than normal, but... <sighs> can see it, see it shearing the coating off the uh, um, shank on this bolt, which is fine. I actually didn't blast that area, I left the anti-corrosion coating on it. And I know I just saw another comment on one of the break videos of people asking about the torque specs on these. Don't have them. Um, Brembo won't tell anybody because Brembo is of course convinced that you can't take their brakes apart and redo them. Um, which, you know, if you're redoing brakes, you know that they're already a terrible finish on Brembo's. So it's weird that they try to make it seem like you shouldn't be doing it, but it is what it is, so. That one's done, fully uh, rebuilt and everything. Just gotta put the um, bleeder valves back in it and the logo's on, but we'll do that here in just a minute. All right, so front brakes, literally identical. Same process, same everything. Um, just with slightly different parts. I mean, you're, you gotta make sure that you're grabbing the front pistons instead of the rear. Remember there's two different size pistons, front and rear, or on the front there's two different size. In the back that's just the single size. I think the back is actually the exact same size as the smaller one on here. I think they're both 40 millimeter, if I remember correctly, which probably don't necessarily, so look into that. I'm just taking my word for it for now. Make sure all these pistons are nice and clean. Like I said, brake cleaner acetone, any of that stuff, just wipe them all down. And then uh, start this whole process over again, this time with the rebuild kit for the front, which obviously is different. You're not going to want to mix these parts up, but honestly, it wouldn't really matter because you can't get them wrong necessarily. So, 
Make sure this is in camera range. Same process, grab a big ring for the bigger hole here. And this is the most important one. This is the one that actually does all the sealing. This is what allows your brakes to actually work. So when I told you guys to be careful, putting them in, making sure that you had everything straight, that is the reason. Stopping seems like it would be a priority for most of us. Smash it all down. Put the smaller one in as well. You can drop both the pistons in at the same time. Once again, make sure you're grabbing halves that match each other. You want the bleeder holes to both be on the same side when you put them together. Because doing all this, then taking it apart to fix it would suck. Be a bummer. Put some uh, lube or at least some brake fluid on these. I have uh, multiple sets of brakes in here right now. So I'm probably only gonna, I mean, I'll be showing some of the other brakes, but I'm not gonna be doing much. Actually, I just remembered. Even with multiple sets of brakes in here, I'll probably just show coating on the other ones. The, the next set that I'm doing is actually a two-tone brake job. The logos are gonna be in powder coat, so I figured I'd show you those to you guys. I know I've been asked about doing logo stuff. I kind of went over one on a live. It's actually the one that I messed up. Some of you guys were uh, around to see that or be entertained by my shenaniganery. <clears throat> Front piston, a little bit of fluid. Probably should have turned my compressor off. Ever since I fixed the other compressor, um, I've had the box open that it's in, so it's much, much louder than normal. <laughs> it's a bummer. I'm gonna go put that back together, actually. And of course, I can't get this one to go in straight. You always want to make sure that you don't have any twists or anything wild in it. And I don't. It's just not going in. Alright. Got that one in. Dust cap on. The idea is you want to get one side over completely and then, yeah, there we go. There we go. Jeez. Okay. Uh oh, actually, let's put these plates on. Plates and screws. <clears throat> Sorry be talking I realize that this isn't super entertaining but it's a how-to it's not supposed to be it's not supposed to be entertaining it's supposed to be uh, educational so to speak
don't know why I have the weirdest time putting those on. I've done this I don't even know how many times. And I still goof it up. Okay. One side done. Actually still doesn't look like it's like seated down in here all the way. I'm gonna pull these out a little bit. Make sure that it's actually in there all the way. There we go. Put this dust cap back down. Like I said, this doesn't really click into place. Like you don't really feel it, but you just press it down and it will stay. All right, let's do the front part of this one. Another suggestion, uh, if you guys are doing brakes often or any sort of small engine part um, or any part, really for anything, uh, my buddy that does a lot, he does a bunch of RC car, like rock crawler stuff and he uses them all the time, but you can get a uh, super, so or no, Sonic Cleaner, something Sonic Cleaner. Uh, I'll put a link to it down in the description. Uh, ultrasonic, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, you can get them at Harbor Freight, and he uses that to clean his little parts. I mean, he just sets them in there. It takes a little bit, but it'll make sure that there's nothing in um, little tiny cavities and stuff. It, I mean, even a part that looks clean to you, you use this and you'll look and be like, oh, look at all the stuff at the bottom of this now. So, um, definitely makes a difference. It's worth doing, like I said, if you're doing this often. Um, you know, if, it's, if you're watching this video because you want to learn how to do just your brakes, it's probably not necessarily worth going and paying for that, but unless you have some other use for it, I guess. And then it might be worth it. Okay. The thing moved up. Push the piston part way in. I swear every time I do this, these bigger pistons are more of a pain to get in. I don't know if it's just the more surface area, the more drag on the seal, but they always seem to be the ones that are a little bit more of a hassle. But that one went right in. Plus cap on. Spin it to make sure it's all lined up. Dust cap on. Spin it. So, we'll be shoving these back in the rest of the way. I actually make tools specifically for this task. Um, with nothing, I mean, with brand new, a brand new setup, you should just be able to push them in by hand. So, there's no point in using a tool for this particular task, but if you would like to, you're of course welcome to. I'm gonna grab some screws out of my cleaner here. Grabbing nothing but bleeders now. Jeez, there we go. And I know this is actually, you know, painfully similar to uh, another brake rebuild. You know, like I said, it might have been my first episode. I feel like it was my first how-to, but um, that one I didn't use a rebuild kit. And this one I am, so I wanted to show, you know, if there is any differences, which is not really. I mean, for me, it's there's no point in not using a rebuild kit if you're going to go through the hassle of doing all this. Might as well go through that much of a, that little tiny bit of extra work and make this work out. And can't forget our little tiny O-ring here. 
make sure that that's clean. And that just pops down into place. Like I said, this isn't a wear part. It just gets smashed between these two things. These don't look like they sit even. I mean, this is actually all the way in there. Um, it's just the way they sit. When these come out, it ends up looking, you know, being even. So don't let that stress you out too much. So put that together. I'll drop this piece. Make sure everything's together in here. Some of our bolts that we coated. And I know uh, some Subaru calipers, and I know the Evo calipers, these bolts are two different lengths um, of, you know, from each other. So you'll want to make sure you're putting together the right ones or with the right ones. Just want to get these started a little bit. By now, you should have at least known. It's funny, I'm mad famous for being unknown.